Hello, everyone, and welcome to Post ProRes for January of 2022, the, the first episode of 2022. Uh, my name is, of course, WH Park. And uh, unfortunately, this, this, uh, this episode, we are not going to be joined by John Pollock. He is very busy covering a lot of other stuff, uh, you know, the, the AEW, the, the WB stuff. Um, and, you know, we, I, think, I think the Royal Rumbles this, this weekend, too. I don't know. I don't pay attention. I hate that company. But, you know, I, I have a great John Pollock substitute. Like, I feel if, if my guest co-host this week, if he did as much, like, podcasting as John Pollock did, then he would be the John Pollock of Deathmatch Wrestling. That's, that's, that's what I feel he would be. And, of course, you can tell if, you, if you're a listener, longtime listener of this show, you, you recognize that laugh. It's, it's Joey Bay. Joey, how are you? <laughs> what's up wh uh on on the topic of happy new year it, it would i'd be remiss if i didn't say uh Hi. So, uh, there's, there's, there's that and then uh also i am attending the royal rumble as it's in my hometown uh what? st louis this saturday so I'll, I'll be in attendance uh even though i also do not watch that stupid <laughs> terrible promotion uh but I, I can't pass up going to a, a big stadium show like that sure why not why not i mean i think i think you are getting what like you're getting lashley versus lesnar yeah yeah and then uh, i think they're doing roman and uh uh seth rollins <laughs> and then a bunch of stupid bullshit and then um uh apparently ronda rousey's coming back i that's the room rumor on the street so i i I'd be pleasantly happy and surprised. And no, I guess not surprised since it's already out, but I'd, I'd be happy to see her, her return. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, it's uh, we're here to talk Japanese wrestling, not that's this right. stupid, but I mean, that's a, that's a sad excuse for wrestling. Listen, <laughs> I, 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 I will watch, I will watch part of the actual rumble itself. If, if Brock is in it again and he eliminates almost every, like if he, if he was one and went to 30 and eliminated 29 other people, and just say the whole thing, like you know, he almost did that until like yeah, who yeah. was it? Who fucking eliminated him? Fucking was Rick, it, Rick, it was fuck. No, it's fucking Ricochet, wasn't it? Uh, it was. It was only two years ago. <laughs> we can't even remember. Uh, I, it was like a something like that. Keith Lee, Ricochet, one of the guys that doesn't matter in WWE anymore. <laughs> or has like, well, I mean, released. Keith Lee's not even not even there. But you know, Ricochet <laughs> might as well not even be there. The, the way he's used, from what I understand, I don't know. But anyways. If if you have like Lesnar just like beat the shit out of every twenty nine other of these <laughs> geeks and jobbers in this company and throw them out and he wins the fucking thing, yeah, I'd be happy with that. I I would not be I would not be opposed to watching that, but that's probably not going to happen. They'll probably have like some fucking I don't know fucking this fucking who is this fucking guy like this this dancer fucking <laughs> dude fucking guy I don't know um I, he's like i honestly i have like no idea who's gonna be in the rumble i have no idea. like the only thing i'm i'm truly excited for is that lesnar lashley match and that's because i'm going in cold without seeing any of the build whatsoever yeah and i'm just fingers crossed that they throw up an octagon uh, and they have an actual mma fight <laughs> i know that's not uh, i guess they, they just It'll let him go cool. i can see lesnar right? and yeah. lashley just fucking like saying to each other, let's just fucking stiff the shit out of each other. Let's just go, just go super, yeah, yeah. Go let's super just, aggro and just beat the hell out of each other. That, that, that <laughs> yeah, you doesn't want to see like you know Lesnar go super aggro on guys who are just as almost as big as he is, right? You yeah, know? seriously, it's not bigger. So, but anyways, that's that's <laughs> have fun at that. Thank Wear you. a mask and be careful, my friend. I I don't want you catching COVID from these fucking WWE marks. Um, yeah, thank. You. I'm boosted and I, I will be wearing my kn95 so I, guess, <laughs> I appreciate it yes i i don't want to get any bad news from you because you attended the rumbling i know right but but we are we are here to talk uh, about pro res uh, japanese wrestling and and we're going to do some previews we're going to we're going to talk about some a bit of news that's been happening uh and we're also going to talk about some some reviews and and, and the such of things i've seen i, I don't know if joey's seen them but he's he's well versed on like what I'm going to be talking about. So he can add his two cents, and he knows all the participants. He's familiar with all the participants of, of the okay. matches that I'm gonna 
I actually recommend to people, like I think people should watch that I've seen from, from January uh, of, of this year. It's like, it's, it's, it's a good start. Trust me. I have a, a one single a five-star re- rated match that I did on grapple. And, and I'll, t- I'll tell you what that is. If you, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably already know what this is, but like, I, I will talk about that match when we get to it. But, uh, but you know, J- Joey is a big death match fan. So I thought in, in today's previews, I will include one of his favorite promotions, and, and that is Dainihan uh, Prodez, and that's, of course, Big Japan Pro Wrestling. And, and they got some big shows, Joey, coming up uh, this weekend. Yeah. And, and it's part of their, their, their big tournament. What, what tournament are we, are we uh, in the midst of with Big Japan right now? We're in the Ikitosen uh, Strong Climb Tournament. So they, do, they switch off every year. Uh, big Japan does with, with their uh, yearly singles tournaments. So uh, one year it's a death match tournament. And then the other year, it's a strong tournament. So this year, luckily for UWH, and uh, uh, luckily that we're covering this this year's tournament, uh, it's a strong tournament. So there's actually some wrestling that I think that you would enjoy greatly. <laughs> Probably. I, I have been to the Deathmatch tournament, though, in Yokohama for Big Japan. You know, I, I've, yeah. I've, I've been there for the Deathmatch yeah. tournament. So I think it was like, who was it? It wasn't... Um, uh, Kodama. No, is it Kodama? Miyamoto's Kodaka. partner. Probably, Kodaka, probably, sorry. Uh, Isami? Yeah. Isami Kodaka, yeah. Kodaka, sorry. Brain fart. Kodaka was who he he did some crazy ass match with with not Takeda. It was like some fucking other guy. It wasn't Miyamoto either. It was like some other dude. Oh, who's the short guy? Who's the short little fucker who likes to skewer his fucking face? <laughs> Toshioki uh Sakuda. Yeah. It's probably Sakuda. Yeah, I saw their fucking, I think it was their finals. Might have been the finals of that year, 2019, 2018, I forget. Mm-hmm. But it was less like, yeah, I watched, I was like, that's, you know, there's scaffolding involved, I think. Yeah. Isami likes to jump off of tall oh. stuff. So you probably were like, he's an idiot. He probably ruined his knees on a move. Wow. I mean, <laughs> he's a good wrestler. Yeah, I like Asami. Yeah. If you can get over his look, which it took me some time to kind of get over his appearance. But then, you know, once I saw him live, uh, that really like changed it for me. I was like, that dude is bonkers, but <laughs> he needs, he needs <laughs> but to get yeah, on the gas uh, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. He's filling out as he gets older. I think he's just, you well, know, I think that's just on, eating a, like that's his calories, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's just the ramen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's just it's too much ramen, ramen for I that think guy. He's a heavy yeah. I think uh, he's a heavy drinker. That, yeah, that'll do it too. Hey. Listen, folks, drinking alcohol, do it in moderation. Enjoy yourselves. It's just calories. It's just, you you get older. It's just calories. I I hardly drink. As soon as I left Japan, Joey, I st- I pretty much have stopped drinking. Like I'll I'll drink a cocktail here and there. I have not. I don't think I've touched a beer in two years. Oh man, yeah. You probably on my last trip in 2018 to come visit and see some wrestling with you. Uh, uh, that was probably like the tail end of my like consistent drinking. <laughs> I don't know why we're talking about this, but I. I remember you have some stories about me being pretty blitzed over in Tokyo that time, but, uh, and probably being the cause and reason for being late to uh, a big Japan show actually after the G1, but we've talked about that on previous shows, but yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm not much of a drinker anymore either, to be honest. It's uh it's kind of come and pass for me. I just, I'd rather wake up without a headache in the morning and not feel bloated. <laughs> yeah. It's like, listen, I'm going to have, Usually, if I have an alcoholic beverage, it's like a, a Caesar. I don't know if you had, which in America is a is pretty much a Bloody Mary. It's just we use clamato juice instead of tomato juice for uh-huh. for the for the for the vegetable part of it. But uh, it's pretty much like I, I'm a big fan of those. Not too heavy. Whiskey is usually okay to drink in moderation, especially if it's mixed with something else. And I'm a big fan of those. But again, I don't drink those all the time. It's 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 only when I go out. So there you go. But yeah, the Ikitosen uh, Strong Climb Tournament, they're going to have a, a, a several like shows from, from Yokohama Sambo Hall uh, this weekend. And we're just going to go kind of go through these, these uh, shows. We talk about three different shows. And I just want to get your thoughts on some of these. Some of these names I'm not super familiar with anymore. So sure. we'll, we'll talk about this. On the, uh, so January 29th, on, there's going to have two shows. They're going to have two shows, the day show which is starts around noon and then they're gonna have the afternoon show, which would probably be around like 5 PM. So 
It's more like an evening show. But uh, on the day show, we're going to start off with a singles match between Taku Kato and Kazumasa Yoshida. Kato, I know. like He's a big, beefy lad. He, he's, he's part of that strong division that I, I'm a big fan of in Big Japan. Uh, yep. Yoshida, I, is he a new boy? Yeah, he's he's a, a newer uh, wrestler on on their roster. He's he's still uh, very green, but uh, I th- the full theme between these two is that they they both kind of claim like a purple as their like color of choice for their their color schemes. Um, but no, I, I fully uh, like foresee Takuho Kato just beating the absolute hell out of Yoshida in this opener and finishing them in like six minutes. <laughs> and that's all you um, need. For, for a young yep. boy match, you don't need anything more than 10 minutes. Six is even better. Uh, there's yep. going to be a, a tag team match, which I assume is a death match tag team match. It's Jackie Numazawa and Ryuji Ito taking on Kankuro Hoshino and Yuichi Taniguchi. The the latter team, I'm not familiar with there, Joey. What can you tell us about uh, Hoshino and Taniguchi here? Uh, Kankuro Hoshino, is, uh, he's, he's a part of the G-Shock uh stable uh currently with uh akira hyoto um yuichi tanaguchi is in he's like the bus driver for big japan he's an old wrestler um he's he's an old man <laughs> but uh he's he's a comedy wrestler and given the slot of this match in the venue and kind of knowing from experience about yokohama sambo hall uh i do not foresee any of these matches being proper death matches i don't think they they're allowed to do death matches in that building anymore so uh i fully expect this one to be uh two old men in jockey numazawa and ruji ito versus two other old men <laughs> kankuro hushino and yuichi tanaguchi um but yeah if if there's one guy in this match that kind of uh is is worth noting right now it's kankuro hushino because he's he's uh uh, slotted for a uh, title shot against Yuko Miyamoto in the, I, I can't remember what, what show it is. It's one of their big shows coming up. Uh, if that even exists for big Japan anymore, I don't think they have big shows per se, because they, they're not really uh, getting higher attendances than more than like 500 people at most events these days. But uh, nonetheless, um, yeah, probably just a standard silly uh, fun tag team on the, on an undercard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ever been to you ever been to Big Japan at uh, Shinkiba, Joey? Uh, Shinkiba? No, actually, I've only ever been to Shinkiba once, and it was for an All Japan show. Weirdly enough, so I, I've been to like Big Japan a couple of times at Shinkiba First Ring, and uh, and like you know they do the gimmick where like they they sell the merch outside, right? But they also yeah, sell other like, things, like, right? Like I'm pretty sure Jackie Numazawa, like he sells like his own homemade alcohol. I don't know how I don't know how this is legal, by the way. Like, but Japan's like different place, right? But like yeah. I'm pretty sure he's selling his own homebrew fucking moonshine or something at the merch stands. And like I think a friend of mine says, Yeah, you wanna he wants to, he wants to know if you want to buy a drink from him. And I'm like, like if you see what Jackie Numazao looks like, not I'm judging <laughs> or anything like that. It's like and I'm like, what is it? It's like it's like it's his alcohol. And I'm like, I no fuck no i'm not doing that forget it like like you know i'll, I'll drink i'll drink fucking okabayashi's pasari water gimmick thing whatever that is like that's yeah, fine yeah. i'm not drinking jackie numazawa's fucking alcohol home homebrew fucking moonshine that's all i'm saying you know <laughs> so I, it's, it's not in the cards for me you're pre- probably better off for it but actually uh jockey is uh he's a pretty prize pretty much a prize possession for big japan at least for foreign fans because I, I'm not sure if you know this WH or even if you care, but uh, he does all the English translations uh, and uploads to BJW core. So um, whatever worth he has lost in the ring, he has provided uh, and exceeded that worth with uh, just production ends of the spectrum. There you go. Japan. There you go. So, like, that's awesome. Yep. <laughs> Good for him. I was thinking yeah, like, no, Hey, right? you, if, at some point, if you can transition out of the ring at, at you know, a certain point in your life, based on it because of injuries and age and things like that, but you can still do something productive for the, for wrestling, for the wrestling promotion that you're affiliated or employed by. Awesome. So, yeah. so and then Jackie Nozawa, like, like, kudos like to you. On the side. <laughs> and his, his homebrew moonshine that I will never drink. Uh, next in a six man tag team match, uh, we're going to have uh, Abdullah Kobayashi, who may be the next triple crown challenger in all <laughs> Japan for wrestling. 
Uh, we'll get to that when we get to All Japan. Uh, Daisuke Sakamoto and Drew Parker, who I thought was leaving Japan, but I guess not. He's still there. Yep. Did he, yep. Did he come back? Did he do a tour of America and then he came back? No, the tour never happened. He never left. He had his his farewell match on, I, b- I believe it was December 4th against Abby at uh, uh, Shinkiba First Ring. And he was getting ready to, I think him and Chris Brooks were, were both like going to come over to the States for a while. But um, word on the street is like uh, the restrictions got kind of tighter over there. And he he just ended up staying and he's still there and I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything new with regards to him coming back over, but I mean, well, you know me, I'm a big GCW fan. So he was slotted to be on like every GCW yeah. show for like, like the first like four months of the year. And now it's just completely gone. So poor Brett Lauderdale is probably scrambling to figure out what to do with his death match book. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll but, find, uh, I'm sure he'll find some other person willing to mutilate themselves in in, in his promotion i'm sure there's yeah, no shortage of them <laughs> but you but, know that being said drew parker i've seen drew parker live and and yeah. I, I will say like i do think drew parker uh for someone who primarily does death matches is a very talented young man and uh hopefully he can get over there and and and, and ply his trade in front of all you bloodthirsty americans <laughs> so I hope thinking, so. this this trio is going to take on the team of Akira Hiyoto, uh, Yuki Ishikawa, and Yuko Miyamoto. This should be a fun tag match. Uh, you know, especially it seems like if you're saying to me like Sambo Hall does not allow deathmatch wrestling, then it's just going to be a straight wrestling match. Probably some comedy mixed in there. Yep, yep. with Abby yes. and stuff. But uh, probably some comedy, maybe maybe some chairs or something. A little bit of plunder, but yeah, don't expect tubes on these shows. And honestly, they probably won't even be. Sure. <laughs> uh you'll probably have to wait until they make it to core and bjw core that is in like a maybe like two or three weeks hopefully <laughs> sooner their turnaround time's kind of picking up so that's it's a uh, it's it's uh heading in the right direction but, yeah yeah I mean, this it, looks like a fun little tag like, yeah. it really does i i think it should be like yeah i mean sakamoto and you know and parker should carry their load with you know drag abby along there and then uh Kyoto and Ishikawa Miyamoto, I think they can all go. So there you go. Like, hey, listen, I, I, I'll give Abby very nice man in person, <laughs> but I, you know, not not for me. As as Hideki Suzuki told me to my face in person, he said to me as he pointed to Ab- Abdullah Kobayashi in front of me, he's like, he is comedy wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> I have it from no less an authority than than Hachi Man, formerly of Diamond Mine in Ten X. <laughs> <laughs> Hideki Suzuki told me that to my face in person. Uh, tag team match: Shikahiro Irie, one of your favorites, and uh, one of my favorites, Yuya Aoki, will take on the team of Yasufumi Nakanoi and Yuji Okabayashi. This should be a banger. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of those matches that, like, I, like Big Japan is like, you really got to pay attention and you really have to put the effort in. But they sprinkle in these types of tag matches, like just random, kind of like, just they'll, well. Irie and Aoki are tagging together, but Nakanoi and Okabayashi, they, they're they not on like a team or anything. So it's just random pairings for the most part. Um, but I mean, yeah, they just throw matches like this on, on cards and uh, you kind of got to keep an eye out for it. But then like, dude, it's, it's worth it. Like just the juice is worth the squeeze with stuff like this. Cause these dudes are going to go out there and have the exact type of match that you would expect them to have. And it'll be awesome. Um, uh, and nobody will talk about it because nobody sees it because it's big Japan. But I like it's like matches like that where you just wish, you know, why can't they just upload this to YouTube and just spread it all over the Internet? So yeah. people are aware that there's good shit out there from big Japan. But I just say if you want to see more then sign up to our, 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 you know, BJW core, which, you know, like before, if you said to me, <laughs> oh, this is going to be uploaded in like, you know, seven months time, I'd be like, yeah, this sounds like BJW core, but like, I'm glad that their, their turnaround time has, has improved a lot here. Yeah. Um, next, another tag team match. And uh, this is kind of a mixed bag on paper for me, at least Daichi Hashimoto and uh, no relation. Kazuki Hashimoto will take on the astronauts. Big, a big favorite between me and Joey. I, I have gotten astronauts gear for you signed by the astronauts. It's you right. Know. It's, it's for, it's a, uh hanging right behind me actually uh on display it, i never take it down i love it <laughs> so thank you very much but <laughs> uh, yeah so fuminori Aibe and takuya nomura two awesome wrestlers will take on uh daichi Hashimoto, 
Yeah, I yeah, I people know my feelings about Daichi Hashimoto, and and like I have to ask you, I have not seen recent Kazuki Hashimoto, but what I have seen from last year, he he did he just did not look motivated anymore. He 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 before he was a really chubby dude, and then yep. he he got ripped. I mean, yep. this guy was like inspirational looking, and yep. then you know, he 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 looked like he stopped caring. I don't know if he got injured or it, whatever. It, his big old belly came back. <laughs> right. But no, I, I, I totally follow what you're saying there. Um, the only real defense I, I can point to is he had another very sparsely seen match where I think there's probably like 50 people in attendance against Koji Kanemoto like last month. And it was great, but nobody will ever see it. And it's just a, a wasted effort for, for the most part. But um, no, I mean, I think he'll show up for this and, and uh, I, the astronauts tend to like bring the best out of their opponents. And uh, that's, that's going to be fun, man. D hash and K hash hanging out, <laughs> like tagging together. That'll be fun, man. Um, so, yeah. yeah no, no more. No, no, no I, more. Daichi just like, they, they always beat the crap out of each other. So I look forward to that one. Too. And now, <laughs> and now no more is on a level, right? Cause he, he's a former strong champion. Along yeah. with uh, Daichi Hashimoto. So it's like not not anymore like uh Daichi's the fucking senpai and I'm gonna beat you up because you're my fucking kohai. Now they're like their peers because they they both have reached because Nomura has reached that level of being yep. a main eventer in the company, which is long overdue, um, by the way. Sure. Um, but sure yeah, was. so <laughs> I think the dynamics will make this now like the dynamics of 2022 of Dai if Nomura being like a former strong champion. Will make it a lot more interesting than what we had in the past, which was still good. It's just like, yeah. it, but it, it'll follow. That would follow like uh, Daichi's. You know, he's not going to be Daichi. You know, you know it because he's still his kohai, his junior. But uh, yeah, that should be should be a fun match. Uh, and uh, rounding things out, two Ikitosen strong climb uh, matches in uh, Block B. Uh, Kasumi Kikuda, uh, from what I understand, uh, Manami Toyota's boyfriend. I don't know if he's still her boyfriend. Really? I yeah. No yeah. I heard, uh, I believe it was Dylan, Dylan Fox over at Eastern Layer told me, oh, yeah, because if you could, is uh, dating a Manami Toyota. This is like a year, year and a half ago. Like, so if it's still, if it's still a thing, hey, good for Kakuda. He's not the best looking dude in the world, but hey, you know, good for him. Get, you know, get, getting to be associated with a legend like Toyota. Can't yeah. Go. You, know, you can't can't really go wrong. But, anyways, Kakuda is going to take on Kosuke Sato. What, what do you think about this match on paper there? Joey. uh well having just watched uh, uh the, the one good thing about big japan streaming is they are very good about their single cam hard cam uh live streams on nico nico especially for their corkin shows and kakuda had a match with sekimoto and I'm a, I'm a fan of kakuda just generally but um him and sekimoto had like a banger of an eight eight or nine minute match last weekend and uh that compounded with kosuke sato just being like a fiery young young kid who's just like scratching and clawing for every opportunity he's given. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I, I think I'm actually going to earmark that and 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 seek it out once it once it gets uploaded somewhere. But uh, um, yeah, no, I, I think Kakuda will probably ultimately win, but um, I think it'll be a good back and forth, hard hitting matchup for sure. And in our main event, uh, block A match will be Hideyoshi Kamitani. Would take on Koda Sekifuda, and uh, is Kamisani still wearing the uh, like the fucking jeans and the and the wife beater? <laughs> not in this tournament. No, he's, uh, he's not. He he had a he wrestled Okabayashi on that Corkin from last weekend, which was also a banger. No surprise there. But um, yeah, he's he's in his old old school tights and no knee pads and just boots and tights. Old school Kamitani. He's he's another one who's just like like if you know Kamitani. Like you, you probably are a big fan of him, but I mean, he just, he gets slept on so much and he's, he's awesome. He's such a good wrestler, man. Like he just puts every, like, like all the pahutspa he can, you know, into his, his strikes and at just full speed ahead on everything. It's uh, he's, he's a good wrestler, man. <laughs> I would, I would poach him. Like if I, if I say like I ran like all Japan or pro wrestling Noah or something like that, he's someone I would try to poach him and Nomura be the two like top of my list for try to poach like take yeah. away from big japan to put in my fed it'd be these these two more than anyone else on the card like more than daisuke or okabayashi 
it'd be like, okay, yeah, Kamitani oh, and Nomura would be like these guys because you can build you can build them into the main event mix. Nomura for sure is a main event guy. Like Kamitani, good semi main guy, but like you put him in like in, in the tournament as a spoiler or like you know what I mean, and then or make him a tag wrestler. Like fuck yeah, like he'll he he's a great person to like have like to round out like your roster as far as like yep. you're going to get, he might not look like much in terms of like his, he's, he's like a bigger, like younger, like he looks like fucking Masanobu Fuchi. If you know, you know, <laughs> yeah, the he, gear is the fucking same. Yeah. Okay. Fuchi and Kamitani he basically had the same, the same gear, but you know, Kamitani, he, he's a really good wrestler. I was really dismayed when he started doing the deathmatch stuff and started wearing jeans and then the tank top. I was like, Oh, <laughs> what happened? No, fuck you. Big Japan. How dare you? But uh, well, well, WH, all he was doing there was creating his variant attire for you to use in in a virtual pro wrestling or whatever in 64 game you of your choosing. <laughs> so he just needed that variant attire to fill out his, his wardrobe in the, in the creator wrestler mode. Is yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, well, or like well, his alternate gear or whatever. Yeah, well, let's move on to the afternoon show. Uh, we'll run through these very quickly. Uh, uh, Jackie Numazawa versus Yuichi Taniguchi in a singles match. Uh, uh, Ryuji Ito and Yuki Shikawa take on uh, Kikuda and Miyamoto in a tag match. Uh, Abdullah Kobayashi and Drew Parker versus G Shock 1010. Am I there saying that right? Yeah, yeah. Is it because they wear G Shock watches? Honestly, I'm I'm not sure where. And this is where I'm probably going to get the flames from guys like Robert if they're listening. <laughs> I honestly don't know where the name comes from. It it predates my fandom because Kenkuro Hushino has been uh, like in the G Shock like faction realm since like 20 at least like 2017 uh, but he he started this tag team with Kyoto like like late 2020 early 2021 and uh they're a fun like plunder tag team man though and Kyoto is another one kind of he's in that same kind of bucket as Kamitani where he doesn't need to do the the deathmatch stuff but I think he's he's more inclined to like he enjoys it <laughs> for whatever right. reason but he's a good wrestler like alone like a, a, apart from the plunder. So um, I think throwing him in there with Hoshino, who does like, you'll, you'll remember Hoshino. If uh, he does all the cinder block spots, uh, <laughs> if yes. you remember all the, he's that guy. So they're, they're the ones, uh, they're the tag team. That's always laying out, you know, like 10 cinder blocks to lay their opponent on. And then they, they'll rev up and do like a running sent on. And then the opponent will roll out of the way. And then they'll, they'll do a flat back bump on, a bed of center blocks essentially it's a uh, wrestling <laughs> it's great wrestling well, yeah i mean you say wrestling I, i'll say something I, I would say something else but uh anyways uh g-shock like i listen my narrative g-shock 1010 they get that name because they both like to wear g-shock watches there you go uh Excellent. astronauts take on uh kazumasa yoshida and satsuki nagao i don't i'm not familiar with uh like uh nagao here what do you think, think of this pa- on paper? What, is, what, what do you think about this match? Uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a quick and easy. <laughs> but uh, I, I believe Nagao is a 0-1 uh, trainee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I have never seen him, but um, yeah, no, I, I'd imagine they're just two, two young boys ready to get their asses kicked. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Six-man tag team match, Kazuki, Kazuki Hashimoto and Okami, Daichi and... Uh, Hideyoshi Kamitani taking on uh, the team of uh, Strong, BJ, Sekimoto, and Okabayashi, and teaming with Yasufumi Nakanoe. This should be this should be actually quite a hard hitting match with, with yeah. all uh, six partic- all six men in this match. Yeah, no, this will, this will be one that I'll, I will definitely favorite on BJW Core to watch later date. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Strong Clang tournament, Block B match, Yuya Aoki will take on Kosuke Sato. This should be a good match. I'm a sure. huge fan yeah. of uh, Aoki. Aoki's he's another one, man. He, he's when you were talking about guys that you pluck uh, for a different promotion. I hate when you when you say that stuff because it means be, Big Japan would uh, probably be facing its demise. But uh, he's another uh, one. That's, no, people, people, no, they they'll still have their deathmatch shit, which is a red butter. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Uh, but yeah, Aoki, I think uh, he got a little uh, taste of of the big big show and big lights when he wrestled in DDT uh, a couple months ago and uh, he showed out there and 
he's just he's a world class talent. So yeah, he's he's the, he's the next uh, you know Shinya Shinjiro Otani. Otani took him under yeah. his wing for a while there, you know. Yep, yep. Uh, and in the block A match, we're gonna have uh, Sekifuda taking on uh, Taku Okato. That that I, I kind of think you know Sekifuda is kind of like you know Kato's senior, so I'm sure it'll be a, a fun match. I I don't really I can kind of see Sekifuda kind of eking out the win here. Like with a flash pin or like a roll up or something. For yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, like he's a junior, right? Like he's considered a junior, Sekifuda. Yeah, yeah. He's I believe he's their junior champion right now. I don't really, but, I don't really pay attention to the junior programs, but <laughs> I, I don't really like Stucky Fuda to be honest. <laughs> no, he's uh, what is it's fucking tag team, fucking the Party Boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah him and uh, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Why am I drawing a blank? Yo, like some guy named Yoshino or something. Yeah, Tatsuhiko Yoshino. That's who it is. Yeah, he's he's actually not bad. He's got a great yeah. look. Stucky Fuda just looks like a fucking clown, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, that should be. I'm sure that'll be. It's the main event, so maybe it'll be a fun match. Anyways, uh, rounding things off, we've only got two two matches for for the you know, strong climb tournament for January 30th. Uh, this yep. is uh, going to be uh, this is a show subtitled Death Market 65. Yep. yep. Rokuchu go. <laughs> uh, and then we in uh, the uh, block A match uh, Nakanoe. We'll take on Kamitani. Ooh, that should be like a fucking beefy match. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the block B match, uh, uh, this should be, this should be, this should be fun because they got good chemistry. I'm not a fan of Daichi, but he's got good chemistry with Daisuke Sikimoto. Sikimoto versus Daichi should be fun, fun match. I, 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 I hope always my boy Sikimoto goes over a uh, hash, hashi here. You know, I'm I'm right there with you, but like Daisuke's my all time favorite wrestler, and uh, I will be uh, watching this one probably not live, but near live as it'll be on Nico Nico uh, streaming on uh, Sunday morning. So yeah, that that's the Nagoya Death Market show. So I'm not sure what else is on that card, but they, those they two strong I, time matches. I I on. didn't see anything else listed. Like that was just these two matches. I, I think maybe they're being careful about announcing cards too soon, even though it's like the day after the the sure. the, the two cards we just announced. But uh, you know my my story with uh, Daisuke Sekimoto. I I ran into him twice, once in Toronto, and once in in in, in Tokyo. So you know, I've, I'm sure I've told you these stories, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only met him in in the you know in the setting of a wrestling show, but uh, it was. Dream come true both times. <laughs> he, he pointed to my like biggest. He pointed to my astronauts T-shirt. And he goes, "You, uh, you know, Takuya? I go, I'm a big fan." <laughs> he was like, "Wow!" And like I said, "Oh, I'm a big fan of you too." Like you know, Oskari Samadas, and he was like, eh, "Nyonko," and like, it was, and anyways, I, I don't want to, you know, do my bad impersonation of a person who doesn't speak english very well i, I don't want to get canceled so we'll just leave it there anyways uh, that's it for the big japan preview uh some some actually some really strong looking matches and and like i can't wait to log in with your your id and password onto bjw core to watch some of these joy go for it yeah and then um i hate to i hate to do this but um as a barrier of entry i know it's very hard for uh, people to get into big japan so if anybody finds himself interested in that those two sunday sh- uh matches uh for the death market show uh send me a dm and maybe i can uh help you out there so that's all there you go <laughs> i i neither i don't know what he's talking about personally but uh you, you dm uh J- joey bay we'll get we'll get his contact information uh, or on, on the twitter for you there uh yeah, yeah. but let, let's move on let's go to new japan and there's some, there's some important news via via John Pollock over at uh, the Post Wrestling uh, website. He he put up an update about uh, some of the stuff happening with New Japan, and and the gist of it is 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 COVID is fucking New Japan more than more than their regular booking is fucking them. Uh, so New Japan Pro Wrestling has canceled its remaining shows for for the month of January. Uh, quote: The company stated that due to a number of wrestlers with elevated temperatures and others coming in close contact. They decided to either cancel or postpone the shows over the next week. So the the, the January twenty fifth show, which had just happened in Fukushima, was canceled. Uh, the January, Saturday, January twenty ninth show at Corgan Hall, canceled, and the Sunday, January thirty show in Ibaraki, canceled. Uh, 
they had an event on Friday in IT that's not been canceled, but it's been postponed until Monday, April 18th. So I imagine that was going to be a, a, a pretty big show with with like some important mar- some important matches for for that particular market in IT, which is basically where Nagoya is. So that's why I assume they they postponed these. Like if they're canceling a you know they're canceling a, a Cork and Hall show, Joey. It's like whatever they're going to have like seven hundred of them this this year in Cork and Hall, anyways, <laughs> right? So uh, refunds have been made available for those that had purchased tickets, and their next scheduled show. Hopefully, like we, we want everyone in New Japan to be healthy and, and safe, and hopefully they can get back to touring uh, on Sunday, February 6th in, in Chiba. Let's cross our fingers and hopefully like we'll have some good news for, for New Japan. And, and, and that would include everyone's uh, you know, healthy and safe uh, from, 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 from COVID over there, as well as like maybe the, the uh, dissolution and banishment of House of Torture. <laughs> What do you think about the house of torture, Joey? I have no thoughts. <laughs> I, they they have they reserve zero space in my brain. I have unfortunately, uh, what's the best way to say this? I'll I'll just say I I, I saw the January fourth Tokyo Dome show, and that was enough for me uh, for so far this year with in terms of my new japan viewing i haven't watched anything else i'm not up to speed on anything um but these show cancellations kind of give me uh the opportunity to maybe catch up but um i don't think, think i'm about, going to what, what did you, <laughs> I what, did just you think about, what did you think about russell kingdom did you watch all three days no i literally only watched january 4th and i couldn't i just i was bored most of it and then it was just, i don't know man and you know me, I try to find like the silver lining and everything mm. uh, with regards to wrestling, but there's just something about watching that, especially that second day. I, I turned it on in the optics of just like the pre-show, like aerial view of the crowd. And I'm like, there, there's, there's barely anybody there. Like <laughs> why, why would I waste five hours of my time to watch this show? <laughs> I mean, I but, watched, uh, I watched I, it like, I pick, uh, you know, because I'm watching it not live. I'm watching it like later on. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to skip this, skip this. I'm going to watch this, this, and this. Yeah. You didn't even bother with the Noah versus New Japan show. I thought that would have like piqued your interest enough. It piqued my interest for, you know, when it was announced. And then, you know, there's a couple of good matches on that show. Like I would recommend yeah, heard, to people. So I heard the, uh, it was the Congo and uh, LIJ tag that was getting all the praise. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think I, I watched up to that match with the intention to like take a break and then come back to it with a fresh set of eyes. And uh, that has yet to happen. So maybe, wow. maybe once we're done with this call, maybe I'll go back and start with my, my backlog of wrestling right there with, with that tag match. But um, yeah, no, I I'm, uh, I'm lacking on the, uh, the takes when it comes to new Japan, uh, which is probably a good thing considering the show cancellations. And um, I don't think you're alone in the yeah, uh, lack yeah. of wanting when people having takes on on new japan it's it's like it's there's some good things in the company everyone like don't get me wrong but as an overall thing like product as an overall promotion it it, top to bottom it's it's not good it's not fucking good it's 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 kind of like you know it it there's this this and this like say there's 10 matches on a card like maybe three are good are worth sure. watching that's it and that's that's sad for if you look at the like, roster that this company has it's like the talent is there it's just the booking is shit it's just yeah. fucking atrocious uh but you know let's stay within the the bushy road family joey and let's move on to the the good promotion in the bushy road family <laughs> one of my favorite promotions in, in the world right now and that's stardom as as people who listen to me no, I'm a big fan of stardom recently. Like, ha- and I have been for like the last four years and especially yeah. the last two, the last two years. Fucking awesome. What a great fucking promotion this place is. I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a big fan of Nats of boy. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, uh, they're another promotion where I, uh, I'm happy that everybody enjoys it, but, uh, I know I, I'm still just kind of on the outside looking in, like hoping that like I, the bug get or what, what's the saying i'm looking for you know i get the, the itch to to watch it but uh i don't know man there's just, there's something keeping me from like fully diving into it like watch the big budokan uh hall show last year and i parachuted in for a couple of shows here and there when um when i had time but 
um, yeah, no, I, I'm really happy that people are are finding enjoyment in stardom. I, I think women's wrestling, and there's there's a plethora of great women's wrestlers, but the, this new renaissance with stardom, and ever since Milano came on and started training the girls, and um, you could probably give more uh, insight on that background. Yeah, and I'm sure you have already, but um, well, I mean, it was yeah. already there, like the the the. The dojo system that was producing all this talent was there before Milano came in. I just think he he tightened up like maybe the maybe yeah, the mat sure. wrestling a bit more, you know. For sure, yeah, yeah. for for sure. Um, but me, you know what, Joey? We're gonna preview their their big show coming up on January 29th, um, Nagoya Supreme Fight 2022, and maybe this should be a, your your jumping on point for 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 starting for this year, and maybe you'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna try to keep up with this company. So January 29th from the Aichi Dolphins Arena um probably maybe it's related to like the the, the sea park that they have in aichi um okay uh so they they're gonna have their uh nagoya supreme fight show it's a big show it's got like tons of like title matches on this um and they got uh two pre-show matches and one one of them i'm going to cr- cr- criticize a little bit here so in the pre-show six woman tag it's going to open the show live, and, and maybe we'll see it on Stardom World for, uh, later on. Uh, Momo Kogo, who was a, in Actress Girls before. She's just a new signee with Stardom. Uh, Wakasukiyama and Mai Sakurai will team up to take on Fukigen Death, Starlight Kid, and Saki Kashima of Oedo Tai. And, and here's my critique, Joey. It's like, why in the fuck is Starlight Kid in the fucking pre-show in a six-woman tag? She is like one of the biggest stars in this fucking company and one of the best like fucking things of the whole promotion. And she's in the pre-show. She's the high speed champion. She should have a title match. And as we go through this show, Joey, I, I can, I'm looking at it right. Like on paper, there's at least one match. So I'm like, take that out and throw Starlight kid on the main show. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, this is, nothing match like you can you can skip this it's just probably just gonna be a lot of like comedy and then starlight kid is probably gonna get the pin over like fucking kogo or something like that uh second pre-show it's a singles match it's raka versus rena two members of oedo tai their teammates yeah skip it you don't have to watch this either it's like they're they're you know they're part of the younger generation in, on the roster it, you don't need to see it but you know get into the, so the they're, they're sorry Raka and Rena, are they, would you say they're still kind of figuring stuff out? Raka, Raka is like, you know, she's gotten a lot better, but like when you, when you, when, when your baseline is complete fucking shit, it's, it's not hard <laughs> to get better, you know? Okay. Yeah, like yeah. Rena, Rena's just, I don't know, she's just, you know, a young member of the roster, you know, she's a young wrestler. There's nothing special about either of them. Like, who knows? I mean, they're both super young. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like maybe, in like two more years, three more years, we'll be talking about, wow, fuck, Rock and Rena are going to have a fucking match on the main show? Yeah, <laughs> right now? No, like, I don't give a fuck, honestly. Yeah. Like, no one cares about Raka and Rena. And if you're a listener, <laughs> excuse me, and you say, how dare you slander Raka like that? It's like, I dare, okay? Because she's fucking, she's not that fucking good to begin with. And she's gotten better, but again, baseline was complete fucking shit, okay? So, it just went up from there. Anyways, the the the, the card okay. proper starts with a uh, future of stardom championship match. The uh, the uh, the JK fighter, I think that's her nickname, Hanan, will take on Lady C, new member of Queen's Quest. Yeah, it should be okay. I'm sure it'd be a fun little opener. Hopefully, it doesn't go more than like eight minutes because neither Hanan nor Lady C are are that great. They're okay, but so it should be an okay match. But that's what future stardom is, you know. It's it's the okay opener. So there you go. <laughs> but however, Joey, the next match it's for the, the 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 tag team championship, the goddesses of stardom tag championship. It's going to be the champions FWC Koguma and one of your favorites Hazuki. Yeah, taking on the the former goddess of stardom uh, champions, the team of Mahime, which is Micah. And he make a of Donna Del Mundo. And I, I love this team. They're the, they're the team that, that held the belts before uh, Julia and, and Sherry. And they were fucking awesome. Like, so I'm really excited to see like Koguma and Hazuki, which, which is a team I, I thoroughly enjoy. I just think they need yeah. to get matching gear. Like Koguma okay. needs a fucking gear upgrade 
big time. She looks like she should be wrestling for like fucking like some sleazy indie fucking you know promotion in Japan, like instead of like you know the biggest Joshi promotion in the world right now. So Koguma, seriously, please please get some new gear. And I I like Hazuki to get new gear too because she's still wearing like her widow tight get outfit and it's like yeah you know just your new person get new gear get new fucking gear please both of you get matching gear so you look like a yeah, tag so team i was gonna ask so like is she is is hazuki basically doing like her same kind of character work that she was doing uh when she retired uh in when was that early 2020 uh yeah no no she's she's a baby face now because she's in stars she's not oh, she's cool. not in the heel faction anymore so, like, when she came back, she wanted to, like, you know, she, because, like, her and Koguma are, like, you know, they tra- they entered the company at the same time, and Koguma is firmly in in stars. Like, she's allied with Mayu, right? Mayu Itani. So, Hazuki wanted to team with Koguma again. She was, Koguma was her return match to the company. And so, then they formed a tag team out of that. And it's like, well, Koguma's not going to become a heel. I don't see, ever see that happening. Never say never, but... So Hazuki became a baby face and she, you know, she's, she's in stars with Mayu and Koguma and like a bunch of other people. And so, yeah, but I just think she needs new gear. Like I, I yeah. like her outfit. It's cool, but it's, it's her old outfit. Get, get new. If you, if you get to start a new phase of your career, get new gear. Yeah. You got to freshen up, change it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, but that should be, that should be a really, I'm, that's probably the match. Like it's in the top two of the matches. Like I'm the most excited about for this show, Joey. It's like uh, Koguma and Husky taking on Micah and Himeka should be earmark that. That's going to be the one. Okay. Like, something you should definitely check out. I I think on paper. Um, okay. okay. SWA yep. Championship. So the SWA Championship was the belt Shuri had before she won the 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 World of Stardom title. I hate this title, Joey. I just think it's. It's superfluous. It's, it's unnecessary. And instead of this, you could have had Starlight Kid defending her high speed championship on the main show. But we have uh, in, in the spot is the SWA championship. It's the it's the uh, decision match. They're gonna uh, fill out the fill the, fill out the title with this decision match between Mina Shirakawa of Cosmic Angels and newest member of Donna Del Mondo, Dana Del Mondo, and of of the starting roster. It's Tekla from ice ribbon and are you familiar with tecla uh no only in gift form on on the twitter machine <laughs> so she's very i think she's a very entertaining wrestler if not yeah. if a little rough around the edges but very entertaining so i i, I i'm i'm excited to see her in in stardom i, I think it's, a, it's, it's it's turned out to be a pretty good fit so this should be a good match i think mina, mina is a really underrated performer i i don't think you know, she's not super technical or anything like that, but she's she's good for what she can do in the ring, and uh, she's more more of a character wrestler. You know, for sure. Yeah, I, but, I like me. But they they these two have a history apparently with each other, like outside of stardom. So this should be a fun match, and uh, yeah, I'm sure like Mina Mina's like got a lot of fire in her when she wants to like really step up her game. So and I think Tekla is a good foil for her. So you know, I'm not. I'd rather see Starlight Kid on the main show, but. You know, again, this should be something that should have, uh, you know, if not being super great, technically, should be a lot of fun to watch. Awesome. I'm just going to cough here. Hold on a sec. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. Anyways, next, a singles match. It's a grudge singles match. Joey, it's going to be Utami Haishida taking on, her, taking on her former Queen's Quest teammate, Momo Watanabe, who's now joined Oedo Tai. She's now the black peach of stardom and uh <clears throat> excuse me i think this should be an excellent match i think there's it's just going to be like a war between these two they just did an angle where where momo stuck a wrench in her her kick pad and kicked oh, wow. azumi right in the face it was great like you think there might have actually been contact of course there wasn't but you might have it looked so good because you know here's the thing about momo watanabe Everyone knows how good Utami is. Momo is like, she hovers in the top three workers in this company at any given time. She'll never fall below in the top five of, of the of the in-ring performers. But since she turned heel, I think her character work and like the focus given to her 
is, has been really great to see. And I think she's really grown into this kind of new persona that she's, she's developing being a heel in, in Oedo Tai and, and like her taking on, and this match with the time is just to be full of hate. And you, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a key component to a great match. In my opinion is, is just full of hate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. There's gotta be emotion. <laughs> oh, there's definitely going to be emotion. So that, that's another match earmark for, for greatness. That should, I don't think this will disappoint. Uh, there's going to be following that. There's a three-way match. It's a special like a stipulation challenge match. So Mayu Iwatani versus Tom Nakano versus Julia, the leaders of their respective uh, uh, factions. Mayu, of course, being the leader of stars, Tom being the leader of cosmic angels and Julia, the leader of Donna Del Mundo. Um, so in this match, in this three-way match, Joey, there's going to be two winners. And uh, with each winner getting a future t- shot at the world of stardom champion, Shuri, on the March 26th and March 27th shows respectively. And, and just everyone, just, if I have these pauses, just forgive me. I, I'm, uh, my, my throat's kind of bothering me at this point, but uh, I'm going to carry on here, but Joey, the, 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 I think because, you know, you want to save Julia versus Shuri, you know, that's the match you want to build towards. So I, I, I do think it's going to be Mayu, and Tom getting the uh, March 26th and March 27th title shots. Okay. So correct me if I'm wrong, but is this with the stipulation, is it a three-way elimination match? So like you, what you're saying is Julia will, uh, you're predicting Julia will get eliminated first and then it'll be a singles match. And then they're the winner of that match. will get the title shot on the later date. And the my, loser my, of that- like, I, I think what will, what will happen is like, they whoever gets the first pin is the winner, yeah, and gets the the, the title the title shot of her her choosing probably on the twenty sixth, and, and then, then the uninvolved party will uh, in, in yeah. the pinfall will get the other title. I got you. Yeah, and I okay. think it just continues after that. It's like a two out of three falls match, and then just okay. continues. I don't. I think all the all three women are going to be still in the match, so there's still a chance for Julia or Tom to get become the the winner of the second match and like gotcha. you know it would it wouldn't count for me or maybe it's you know like okay Mayu won say Mayu wins the first fall she's out of the match which would make sense that does it, there's no point in her being in the match because she's already got her title shot so maybe that's how it, uh, that the winner gets eliminated and the two losers keep keep wrestling gotcha okay yeah um, I was unsure if it was just like a, a single pinfall match and then like the winner gets the match on the 27th and then the person who wasn't involved in the, the, the pinfall or, or decision of the match, uh, like say like Tam pins Julia. So Tam gets the match on the 27th and Mayu gets the match on the 26th, but you're saying that there will be two, two finishers in this one match. Yeah. Essentially. And you I know, know like it Dra- Dra- will do like those, those one pinfall matches or like, uh, or one count, pinfall matches or like the the three way match where like like there are two winners but there's only one pinfall and there's just like a bias no two. i think there has to be two pinfalls and it has to be of like it, it has to be between like it doesn't make any like so i would assume like whoever wins the first fall it leaves the match and then it's it's like it's a uh, you know sudden gotcha. death it's sudden death gotcha. for the, like the remaining title shot so there you go uh, I, I'd rather if I have my choice. If I'm the first winner, I have my choice. I'm going to say I want the 27th because then I'll sure. still, I'll still be fresh, relatively speaking. So exactly. Um, but yeah. Um, and then uh, next up is an, another titles match. It's the wonder of starting championship, the white belt, uh, the current champion, Saya Kamitani, great wrestler. I'm a big fan of Tall Saya. Uh, she will take on uh, Unagi Sayaka from Cosmic Angels. I do not see. You know, Kamitani losing this match. I think she'll go on. And and I don't know if you follow uh, the, the stardom on, on, on Twitter or on YouTube, Joey, but they're doing this angle where, where Kamitani, like her nickname is like Phoenix related. And so she's like, she, she's been pestering Rossi Ogawa for a title, for a match, a singles match against Kota Ibushi. <laughs> what? So, but every time she barges in on like uh, Rossi Ogawa, to, to ask for this singles match against Kota Ibushi, 
he's talking to someone. So the first video when this happens, he's talking to some somebody that you know. Saya looks at looks at this person and it's like you you assume it's a woman. It looks oh my god you're and then Rusty's like no get out get out don't tell anyone who you saw in here. So it's like a mystery, <laughs> right? And then you know she interrupts him having a phone call with this person saying oh Bill be at I believe this show. So we'll find out who it is. But it's obviously a big name. Like you don't do this kind of an angle unless it's a big name. So yeah. like, who's out there that it could be, right? Like that hasn't appeared for stardom yet. And and like recently, let's say. And and like my my outside wish, my outside dream of the, who this might be would be would be Kyrie, Kyrie Hojo, Kyrie Sane. Because that would be fucking oh, awesome. Yeah. That that lines up with uh, with her release, right? Did she get officially released? Like I don't follow. Like, like I think her contract finally ended, or whatever. Like even even though she technically quote unquote retired, uh, I th- I thought I saw something about that recently. But that that would be awesome. I was just thinking it was going to be like Kagetsu or something like that. But that, that's way cooler. It's, it's this uh, Kyrie returning. Like, can you imagine? Like whole. Like so it might it's probably not her, like, but if it is her, okay, I, I called it just on the show, anyways. You know, but if it's her, holy <laughs> shit. Like I I think like the 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 reverb oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The the not repercussions, but like the it will reverberate throughout wrestling as a Dude, whole. I I that that'd be like a like a story of like 2022, like in hindsight, I would imagine just like her coming back home and, you know, probably reinvigorating her career. <laughs> oh yeah. That would be awesome. If she came back, like, because it's so it, it, like the dynamics that are there for her, like she was gone and then she came back and like, she's like, you know, like Mayu is the stardom icon. That's what they call her. But like, yeah. like Kyrie and Io Shirai are like, the fucking stardom legends you know sure. so it'd be like if Kenneth kobashi in 2006 decided fuck this i'm going back to all japan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what this would be like if Kyrie comes back and i use Kenneth kobashi because Kenneth kobashi is Kyrie's favorite wrestler when she was growing up so that's why <laughs> we say that but but like yeah so anyways that's that's exciting like this watch that video Okay, go find it. You can okay. find it on on on, uh, on Stardom Twitter. We are Stardom Twitter account, which is their English account. Um, it's really cool. Like, tell tell me, like, you watch this video. It's like that that could be that could be Kyrie, you know. Anyways, yeah. Let's let's move on. Finally, and and the, this this show this show's pretty fucking good. I have to say, like on paper, I'm I'm really excited about this show. Um, we have the World of Stardom championship match the the current red champion shiri who won the belt from utami uh on uh at the end of uh, december will take on newest addition to stardom mirai from formerly of uh tjpw uh and also shiri's teammate in donna del mundo so like i mean she's only been in the company for you know like a cup of coffee so far so don't know why she gets this title match, but hey, it's it's Japan. This thing, these things happen in, in Japanese wrestling all the time. So Mirai versus Shuri. I'm not super familiar with Mirai, so I'm not sure how good this will be. But you know, Shuri is the best wrestler in the world, in my opinion. And so, like, if if anyone can get a, a match out of like a great, a great, good to great match out of someone that I'm not familiar with, it's probably Shuri. For sure. Did you see your match with me, Tommy? No, but I, I I saw that it was a bunch of people's match of the year, so I feel stupid for not having seen it. <laughs> well, you can always but, go back and watch it, Joey. That's fair. Yeah, no, I, I I feel like I need to like dedicate a weekend to just watching all the key matches and in, in stardom over the past like year and a half or so. Because there was a point where I was I was kind of hanging on and, and following, and then uh, you know the pandemic hit, and just interest levels just dropped. But it seems like of all companies to not sleep on right now. It, I, I hear stardom just gets rave reviews from everybody that loves it. So um, I need to, I need to dip my toes back in. It's got good <laughs> booking. Got Here's the thing. It's got good booking. Like that's so rare. Like, and it's good booking usually 
from top to bottom, which is so rare in Japanese wrestling. Yeah. Like usually, okay, the 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 top mix is good, or the the mid card is for whatever reason is good. Everything else is not good. Yeah. Whereas Stardom is like I can say, okay, pretty much from third match and up, the the probably the the, the matches and the booking will be good. How often can you say that about like not even you can't say that about New Japan, all of Japan, not even Noah? Like there's like stardom for me is like and certainly nothing in, in America like that that to me like will will match like kind of that overall quality. So like definitely I, I would highly recommend I think you would get into the 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 booking overall of the company. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. F- from stardom. Like, and then maybe this is the show that you like, like I said before, Joey, this is a show you should be looking to like, maybe dr- jump back in to, yeah, to man, back into sure. start on for sure. Let's move on to like all Japan for wrestling. I got, a, I got a chance to catch up on their new year's wars shows uh, that happened uh, earlier on in, uh, in January uh, from January. And I'm just going to talk about the matches that, that I watched that I really would highly recommend to people. And and on uh, day one, January second, uh, this uh, these are all from Cork and Hall, of course. Um, there's uh, two matches from the January second show. One is a six man tag team match. It's Next Stream, Atsuki Ayo, uh, Atsuki Aoyagi, Kento Miyahara, and uh, Yuma Aoyagi. Uh, Yuma and uh, Atsuki are brothers, and they took on the team of Hikaru Sato. Uh, Shotaro Ashino and Suwama. Ashino and Suwama are the current, you know, all Japan world tag team champions. They are collectively known as Runaway Suplex. Joey, I have to get this fucking t shirt. It's so awesome. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen it. You got to DM me it. Because I'm, okay. you know, I'm a t shirt fiend. So, oh my God. Maybe cool, we'll have to do a fine. joint order or something like that, you know, through yeah, via yeah. like someone I know in Japan who can, can get the shirt <laughs> for me and shit. But, I, first of all, let's talk about this name, this tag team name, Runaway Suplex. How fucking cool is that? That's pretty awesome. It's it's no violence giants, but I, I feel like if Suama would have gone any like derivative of that, it would have been kind of tacky. Uh, well, with, it, well, listen, it, it, you couldn't do a derivative of that because you know I'm afraid Ashino is not very tall. <laughs> That's true. He's a little. He's pretty short, and you know it's so weird. It catches me off guard because he doesn't look like a short person when he's just you know standing alone. But then he he's standing next to his contemporaries, and you're like, oh man, he's uh he's vertically challenged. That's for sure. But he's yeah, a badass. I, I love Ashino. He's such a badass. Oh, me too. I think he's he's awesome. He should be. He should have. Won the world championship last year, <laughs> in my opinion. But me too. But hey, you know what? I I really dig this tag team with Suwama. I I have never turned against Suwama. I love Suwama, and I've never turned against him. I ne- I don't think I ever will. You know, I'll always be a Suwama supporter. Oh, he's the best man. He's so fucking good. Seriously, like people like oh, he's not as good as he was before, or he's never been that great. Fuck off. He's awesome. I yeah. love Suwama. People that he, say that they, they haven't devoted enough time to actually understand why he is as good as he is and why people hold him to that regard. But no, because I used to be one of those people. And then I sat down and watched, you know, <laughs> a handful of Suwama matches. And I was like, oh, I get it now. But no, he's, Suwama he's a- knows, you know, he's got the best quality of, of a wrestler, especially of his of his age and his experience level is his timing. He knows yeah. what to do. More importantly, he knows when to do it, and that, that's such. A, and he's such a great tag team with with Ashino, and and yeah, they're killing it. Anyways, this six man tag team match, really, really good. I totally recommend. It's not that long; it's like less than twelve minutes, but it's a twelve minutes of just fucking nonstop action and just banging like a lot of heat. Like Yuma and Ashino, they're they're like they got this little mini feud going. There's a lot of hate between those two, and it just plays out in these in this match definitely worth checking out but the main event of the show was an all asia tag team title match it was the team of of uh, the championship team strong hearts one of your favorites joey l lindeman and t hawk yes one of your favorites oh yes i'm sorry i thought you were you were continuing of course yeah man i love i love the strong hearts guys <laughs> i just wish they you know find a a place to actually land and stay put for a while but 
I mean, Gleet is only a handful of shows a year at this point. So yeah, please, please keep coming back to All Japan. <laughs> yeah, come come back to All Japan on a permanent basis. There you go. Uh, but they took on the the tag team of Hoku, Hokuto Omori and Yusuke Kokodama of, of Total Eclipse. And uh, yeah, this was a title change. Total Eclipse won the match. It was like a 15-minute match. It was fun. Like, it starts off a little slow. I will say that. But my God, once it gets past the, like, I'd say the, the four or five minute range, it, it just keeps nice, steady pace, really, really fun tag team title match. I, I'd say it's, it's, uh, it's in the, uh, you know, three and a three quarters to four star range for me. So check it out. But um, WH, I have to ask, did you watch the, uh, uh, this was the first show of the year. Was it that, so? This would have been the the show that they have the uh, annual battle royal on. Did you watch the battle royal? No, I <laughs> no, <laughs> I I skipped a lot of. Like, here's the thing about all Japan it was like most of the undercard is shit. Okay, yeah. because it's, they're Booker. It's fun though. It it really is like, especially the Corkins. Like, you know, if you're just sitting around doing nothing and you leave it on just by mistake, chances are it's going to be like an enjoyable like. Like they they know how to like pace those those undercard matches, uh, at least from what I've seen, and they uh, they they don't waste too much time in there with the undercard stuff. So it's it's not that insulting, but I, I get what you're saying for sure. <laughs> His thing is like their their Booker is to Jerry, and he shit yeah. as a Booker. He is terrible. People are leaving because of him, and yep. and and you know I was asked I you know I was asked by John like who's worse, and. You know, like, or it might it might have been with Rich Fan from from the from the Torch, might have asked me actually this question: Who's worse, Ghetto, No Sal Wrong Guy, or <laughs> Tajiri as a Booker, or Dick Togo as a Booker? Oh. And I'm like, listen, at the very least, no one's leaving fucking New Japan or Noah because of the Booker. Fucking people are leaving because of fucking Tajiri because he's fucking shit as a booker. So, and it reflects like the, the, you know, even the Corkins, like, like I, I it's skippable, skippable, skippable. I'm just going to get to the stuff I want to see that I think is going to be good. And, you know, yeah, two matches from, from this show, um, from the, from the, uh, the, the second day show, day two, January 3rd, one match. This is my, this is my first five-star match of the year like i have rated very very highly it is for the all japan pro wrestling world tag team titles it's the championship team of runaway suplex ashino and suama and they took on kento miyahara and yuma aoyagi the former tag team champions and this is 30 minutes of just a perfect tag team match joey that's awesome man i admittedly haven't seen it uh yet but i i fully believe your five star and i i trust your your judgment and uh that's that's the one match like we were talking off air before we started the show and and you were you're telling me about this match and it's it's honestly slipped my mind but i uh i'm gonna go back and watch this when we get off the call tonight <laughs> i'm i'm overly excited to see watch this. the pre-match like you know the pre-match you know video where they're, okay. where they're where they're interviewing Shitaro, Ashino, and Suwama, and and they're talking to Kendo Miyahara and Yuma Aoyagi, and they're just like showing clips and stuff like that. It's really fun. If you if you if you know enough Japanese, I think where you could probably understand the sure. basic gist of what they're of what they're trying to get, convey in these promos. But it's a really well done, you know. And the and I I love the entrances for both teams. Check that out for sure. This is my first five star match of of the year and and it's worth checking out for for anyone listening to this uh-huh. um but uh, and then like uh all japan rounded off with a show from january 23rd from corican uh day three of new Ch- of their new year's wars tour it was the triple crown title tournament uh the kind of a mini tournament that they had to uh fill out the vacancy uh of the triple crown from jake lee who got injured in a match and and apparently he got injured in a match with uh ryuki honda and uh, Alan Farrell mentioned this on Twitter, and I, I kind of noted it too while I was watching these matches. Is that they, the announcers, the Japanese announcers, the commentators were like talking about like how like what happened with Jake Lee and and Ryuki Honda is very similar to what happened with Stan Hansen and Bruno San Martino, where like you know Bruno San Martino is like kind of like uh, injury like the from a body slam which broke his neck, 
like kind of elevated Stan Hansen to a new level of wrestling <laughs> because they just played that. Oh, he broke his neck with the Lariat. And then, you know, you, you know, kayfabe was super strong in that era, obviously. Yeah. So everyone thinks, oh my God, Stan Hansen's Lariat is so strong. It broke the, the super thick neck of, of, you know, the soup, the, the legend of Bruno, of Bruno San Martino. That's a, that's a nice way to, to work a, an unfortunate situation. It gives Honda a little bit more of a, uh, of a, a mental push if you, if you believe it. <laughs> well, we'll talk about Ryuki Honda in a second here. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, so th- th- we had four matches uh, to, you know, take, pe- to take the four. You know, we had, no, sorry, we had three matches. Two of them were between the four participants in this mini tournament, which were Kento Miyahara, Suwama, uh, Shutaro Ashino, and Ryuki Honda, who also ha- turned heel. You know, since since the incident with Jake Lee, and and you know that where where Jake got injured, and then he joined Jake's faction of Total Eclipse. So mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting here what what might happen when Jake eventually returns. But um, yeah, have so heard, like, have you heard a timetable on on his return by chance, or is it still just like, no? I think it's kind of up up in the air. Like, you know, like um, yeah, nothing. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully before 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 the carnival. Oh, yeah. for the Champions Carnival. Um, but yeah, so Kento took on Suwama in his opening round and he he defeated Suwama. It's a 12, it's like less than 12 minutes. It's it's fun watch. Kento, Kento and like Suwama always have awesome. great chemistry. chemistry. Yeah. It's always good. It's always good. And, and they don't do the same match. They really don't. They 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 kind of like build upon their previous matches, and it's like, oh, like you know, people who like callbacks will like. Any, you know, if you've been watching Miyahara and Suwama have matches for as long as they have, oh my, but like almost 10 years now. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> they're, they're, they're still like trying to keep things fresh between them. But, uh, sure. the, and then in the other match, it's uh, Honda versus Ashino. And you would think, you would think that, you know, Ashino is the guy that the, the, they should push. And I think that they, they're going to push because he finally signed a contract with the company. So, but no, it's uh you know he lost uh, he lost to Riki Honda, and here's where I'm going to talk about Riki Honda a bit. Like before, you know, like before, like the injury to Jake, which he was a you know unfortunate member of part of. Like Riki Honda was just like a rookie in 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 the on the All Japan roster. He was someone that they who jumped over from Russell One after Russell yeah. One had 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 uh, you know died essentially. And you, and a lot of people that I knew who were familiar with him, like maybe yourself, Joey uh, Striga over at Eastern layer. were like, he's a good get for them. He's got potential. And he has really stepped up with this new heel persona and his work is really good for someone with his experience level. Like, I think he's probably just naturally gifted as a professional yeah. wrestler, but his, his push in total eclipse very much reminds me of Suwama when Suwama turned heel and he joined the Voodoo Murders because he he had a kind of a similar career trajectory. Like he was a young guy with a lot of promise. He was like being touted during the Mudo era of All Japan as like, oh my God, he's the next Jumbo Saruta, which is a little unfair. No one could ever be the next Jumbo Saruta. There's only one Jumbo Saruta in history. We'll only have one, you know. But but Suwama became a fucking star from you know, becoming heel, becoming, you know, part of uh, the, the voodoo murders and then striking out on his own. Like, and I see kind of a similar career trajectory for, for Honda where he's going to get this big push. And yeah. part of that was defeating Ashino in this match. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice that they were able to kind of uh, fast forward th- this, uh, this push per se uh, because of the, the Jake Lee injury, because I mean, not to, to beat a dead horse, but I mean, like having lost Jake Lee for, you know, the interim, but also having Naoya no more come back on the, just for one show, uh, just to basically say goodbye to everybody <laughs> when he was slotted to be like 100% him or Jake Lee would be their next ace. Uh, um, or at least they're like, you know, they're one a or one B, uh, to Kento and, losing him like they they need to fill that spot like they need to get some young blood back up and pushed in the heavyweight division so it's nice to have like a ryuki honda kind of organically come out of nowhere with with this uh, situation and that leads us to the the final match which was between kento miyahara 
and Ricky Honda and uh, you know, very, very good match. Like I, I put this in the three and a half, you know, three and three yeah. quarter range for, for a star rating and uh, very fun. And, and Kento works really well with Honda. I think it's, 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 he's motivated to create a new rival for himself in the company. I think with someone fresh and like that, that, you know, he, he seemingly has really good chemistry with. So, um, but yes, but Kento Miyahara does take the title back. He is again, once again, the triple crown champion, probably sooner than probably like the plan was for him to regain the belt. I would assume that they were going to probably build towards him and Jake um, having a match where maybe he would win it. I, I would have done Jake versus Ashino and have Ashino win the belt from Jake. Cause that, that storyline wise, that would have made more sense, but, but it's, it's, it's like, I can't fault them for putting the belt back on Miyahara. Like it's what you would do in this situation. Like they need, to draw fans and he's their biggest star and him yep. being the triple crown champion is, is, is a good move. And like, you have a natural match with Jake when Jake comes back and hopefully like, I, I want Jake to, to have a long title reign. Like this is the poor fella. That, that guy has been so snake bitten in his career. It's not even funny. Yeah. It's, it's almost one of those things where it's like, maybe he needs to like, I don't know, man, like redevelop his body in a, in like in his physique in a different way. So it's more durable or I don't know what you do. Like some people just happen to have that terrible luck where they just are, they're just injury ridden for years and years and years, but hopefully something changes in that uh, for him. So he can kind of stick around for more than like eight to 10 months at a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, we, we look forward to Jake, Jake Lee coming back and, uh, you know, Kento being the, the champion and, and seemingly his, his first challenger, because the first dude who came out to, to say, Hey, I was getting, going to get a title shot with Jake Lee. And now I want my title shot, regardless of who the champion is. And that's Abdullah Kobayashi. And, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I am not, not a fan of this booking, but I, I understand why they're doing it. I, I do not see, I didn't see like Jake losing the title to a fucking Abby Kobayashi. And I certainly don't see Kento Miyahara losing like to fucking Abdullah Kobayashi. No. Like, especially for the triple crown. If, if by some weird, you know, like perverted sense of booking, Abdullah Kobayashi becomes a triple crown champion. I know you'll be happy. <laughs> I will say this: It might he he I would mean, definitely novelty. <laughs> he novelty. <laughs> would be the worst triple crown champion he in the history of the company. He would be worse than fucking Ryotahama and Aki Bono as when they were triple crown champions. Oh, that's rude. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I I uh, I uh, yeah, I can't I can't really defend Abby there. He's one of my faves, but. I, it's it's the charm that keeps me as a fan but uh yeah no i i love that little like long-standing program that they have going with kento and abby that goes back a few years now where just like anytime they're in the ring together abby just goes and attacks them <laughs> like i think there's been two tournaments where they were uh it was a there was either, at least like a tag tournament and then maybe the odo tournament uh last year or the year before, prior abby was in it and they uh they had like uh a tussle like in the opening ceremonies of both of those. And then I think Abby beat him in a singles match in a, one of the tournaments that I'm, I'm talking about, but can't remember which one, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's fun that they're, they kind of like harken back to that and, and kind of bring Abby in every once in a while for that, that little feud. But why, why him? Why can't it be like Okabashi or Sekimoto or, <laughs> or, no, or Nomura, you know, ne- hey. t- Takuya Nomura. Dude, I mean, even Aoki throw at sushi or not. Oh man, now I feel bad. You, yeah, yeah, um, uh, yeah, throw like any of those big Japan, other big Japan strong guys in there. And dude, even like, yeah, Tokuya Nomura and, and Kento, like, holy crap, like, <laughs> match the year candidate on paper, but uh, I don't know, it'll still be fun and maybe it'll lead to something like that where we'll get a Sakamoto appearance again in all japan here in the next couple of months or something that'd be good but um we we touched you touched briefly on naoya namura coming back from his long-standing injury and he had his return match and farewell match it was both yeah. his return and farewell match from from all japan for wrestling uh, he took on his former tag team partner yuma aoyagi and have you had a chance to see this match yeah it was it was really really good <laughs> it was good 
I was like, okay. Like I heard it was good. And then I watched it. And I couldn't believe like, okay, this guy's ready to, he can, he can go. Like, there's no way he didn't get a full clearance and do the half the shit he did in that match. Right. And not be ready to like go. But, but again, he's one of these people that is, is not a fan of the booking, even though he hasn't been there for over a year. Right. But um, the, the talk is that he's very loyal to Jun Akiyama. So you would think that his next destination is, is either is like DDT. I, if, if listen, if he's going to go over to like cyber fight, go to, go to Noah, please. Like yeah. Akiyama, just say, Hey kid, you can, you know, go to, go to Noah. They could use him. He would be awesome in pro wrestling Noah. Yeah, he would. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I see like the, the burning stuff that they're doing in, in DDT with Akiyama and, and, uh, Takeshita and Endo and, and all those guys that that'd be cool but like it's such like an isolated uh like crop of guys on that roster that would he would kind of fit in with where I, I want to see him yeah like like you're saying like he I think he's just a natural fit with like the Noah guys if he is going to to continue wrestling elsewhere but um I and I really hope he does <laughs> I, oh I god yeah because he's an incredible talent, but yeah, I, I really, I honestly wish he stayed in all Japan because I think he could have rounded out that that roster and, and helped it out immensely. But uh, such is life. But yeah, I, I'd, I'd imagine you're probably right. He'll probably end up where with Akiyama and DDT, for what it's worth. <laughs> like him, him and Yusuke Okada. Yusuke Okada should go to Noah. He should be in the junior division in Noah. Yeah. He he would really bolster that thing, and I think he would he would shine. Like I do think their Noah's junior division is getting a lot stronger um, with Yoshioka and uh, Yuya Susumu, like great mm-hmm. additions. And then like how has left Congo and he's joined up with, you know, Daisuke Harada, which is great. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, like, you know, there's some people who can leave. I don't give a shit. Fucking Rattels fuck off. <laughs> um, you know, but like, yeah, like Yusuke Okada, who's like, he's in this burning stuff with in DDT. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's, I, I mean, honestly, I can't think of uh, any other matches in DDT that Yusuke, I, I was a big Yusuke Okada fan before he left uh, for DDT. I still am, but, like, he uh, he had a, a few matches with Yuki Ueno early last year, and uh, that was, like, the last thing of note that I remember him doing, and that, that may just be my my ignorance in DD, the, the DDT uh, uh like programming, but I honestly like nothing hit my radar from Yusuke Okada since this time last year. And it was the, those two matches with Ueno. And it's like, well, if you're just going to sit around and do nothing and just do like undercard comedy tags and, and just dumb bullshit, then you might as well go, you know, actually have like, like, like straight wrestling matches over Noah, like you're saying. Well, why, why, why doesn't Akima just like, okay, finish up his time in ddt i know he seemingly he, he really enjoys it there because it's yeah. like less wear on his body but just just jump to noah man like <laughs> that's where you fucking belong if you're not gonna be in all japan go to fucking noah the the like what a what a program that would be right like, bring okada and nomura and like maybe not uh you know <laughs> Tech, I always fuck up his name. I don't know why. I just have like oh, Takeshita. Takeshita. Like, yeah. don't bring yeah, Takeshita. He 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 stays in DDT. But yeah. Yuki Ueno, holy shit! Like that guy <laughs> would flourish in fucking Noah. Seriously, I mean, he's like a facsimile of Kota Ibushi. I mean, like from his look to his move set to everything. I mean, I I yeah, I like him a lot too. I he's I that's it's a. I mean, DDT is has got some high end talent, but it's like. They're so uh, kind of isolated, like I was saying. Like, yeah. it's, and there's only a fair share of guys that can work at that level in that company, and everything else is kind of like it is what it is. It's fun, but like you're not going to hit those high caliber, high watermark, you know, matches that you're hoping uh, to get, except for maybe one or two guys on that roster. But Yuki Ueno maybe- <laughs> and Kazada Higuchi, those are the two guys I would like petition. If I was like Marafuji, I was like. Give me these, just give me these two. You can have, you can have fucking, you know, fucking f- funky, fucking <laughs> mid card old dudes. You can fucking have them. They would fit really well in DDT, right? You can hang out with, yeah, Makoto Oishi and. Yeah, fucking, you stuff. can have them. You can have fucking Tadusuke 
fucking Yohei and fucking Hayata. You can take those five. I just want these two. I want Higuchi and I want fucking fucking Weno. Bring them over. Plus Okada, Nomura, and Akiyama. And they fucking burning invasion of fucking pro wrestling Noah. Whoa. Listen, I just became a better fucking booker than <laughs> Nosawa Wrong Guy, which is not hard to do, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, I mean, that'd be awesome. You do, you kind of run back like a similar situation that like the burning uh, guys did at, back in like 2013, 2014 when they came back to all Japan. Like, dude, that would be so cool to see those guys have like, you know, five match series with like the current crop of Noah guys. That'd be so much fun. <laughs> but just keep them away from Keiji Muto, who's going to fuck <laughs> them in the booking, right? Okay. Here's the other thing. You need to get Kaito Kiyomiya away from fucking Keiji Muto. Yeah. Like far, far away from that man. And then, like, anyways, that, I'm going to go on a rant. That, he, poor Kiyomiya, like every time you, I mean, anybody that wrestles Muto at this point is subject to just pretty much just laying on the canvas of the mat for most of the match at this point. But I don't know, man, he's so young and he wants to run around and, and hit his high spots. And there he is with, uh, with, with Mudo, just uh, kind of laying around. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're going to talk about Noah right now, actually. So I have two, two, uh, you know, match reviews, for sure. Re- yeah. rec- recommendations, um, the first one is from their uh, January 16th show. It was called Noah Bumper Crop. <laughs> Some of these names. <laughs> Bumper Crop. I, I don't understand. Anyways, Bumper Crop in Sendai uh, from the Sendai Sun Plaza. And, uh, you know, the, the, the main match the heavy, the, was the main event. GHC heavyweight title. Katsuko Nakajima, the current GHC heavyweight champion, took on his former partner from the aggression and his bitter rival now, Masa Kitamiya. And I, I love this match, Joey. I gave it four and a quarter, and it's so good. Like, if you like hard hitting, no nonsense wrestling, and I, I know you like all the shit out there with the fucking <laughs> light tubes and shit, but I also know you like the good wrestling too. Like, you know, yep. you, this is a wa- match you should definitely go out and seek out. This is really good. Um, and, you know, I, I watched the version with like Stuart Fulton and Mark Pickering doing the commentary and and Stuart Fulton, this guy like just like fucking gives you if you don't nothing about Nakajima and, and the history he has with Kidamiya, Stuart Fulton will just tell you all of it. Catch you up in the first like seven minutes of this match just while the oh, match yeah. is going on. It's great. I I big fan of Fulton and Pickering as a as a commentary team. And I think they add so much for for if if listen, if you fucking hate New Japan now and you're like, well what other Japanese wrestling promotion can I watch that has English commentary? Well, fucking watch Pro Wrestling No, okay? Like, I, I say this, like, the undercard shit and, like, some of the junior stuff is not that great, but it's a lot more consistent. That's all I ask for is consistency in my wrestling promotions, Joey. It's a lot more consistent than New Japan, I, in my opinion. But um, this is definitely a match people should go out and check. It's from, again, the January 16th <laughs> Bumper Crop Show. <laughs> what a name for a show the other match i really like was from uh january 22nd from higher ground uh from the edion arena in osaka the oh sorry the edion arena number two so the one in the basement not yeah. not the main one uh i've never been to the edion arena too i've only been in the main edion arena for for the g1 and uh that's one of my favorite buildings can i just tell you have i have you ever been to the edion arena joey no no i've been to osaka uh once and it was only I, I went for dominion at osaka joe hall but it's uh you know if the world ever opens back up it's uh it's uh <laughs> it's definitely up there on destinations i want to get to and i i love that arena on tape so i'm I'm sure it just it looks it's, even cooler in person listen here's the most important thing about the Os- edion arena it's so, air conditioning no the air conditioning is fucking amazing so- I should have guessed with you. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good shot. I mean, you need it down there in Osaka. Uh, oh, in, in July? Oh, fuck yeah. yeah! I would have if it was like Sumo Hall. I would have died. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm never going back there again. But the air conditioning, oh my god, so beautiful. Anyways, from this show, GHC national title, Keno, the champion, the leader of Congo, took on the legend Masakatsu Funaki. 
and Masakasu Funaki defeated Keno and get this three minutes and 58 seconds. Yes, sir. And you know I love I this. I watched this match. <laughs> I love this. I love the finish because it, it felt it felt like it matched Funaki's like legend. For you know, sure. His status yeah. as like a, a real fucking legit shooter. And and I just like listen, it 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 freshens things up for the booking. Like now yep. fans are like, oh shit, a title match can le- end in less than five minutes. Yep. Oh, so they're gonna pop. Anytime Funaki locks in that oh, choke, fuck. yeah, they're gonna pop because like and someone escapes from it, they're gonna pop even more. So that was great. Might have been even better. The pro <laughs> Funaki does after where he's like, I'm leaving M's Alliance, and then Marafuji and Masada Tanaka are like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> and I'm joining Congo. And then Keno's like, really? You want to join Congo? <laughs> and then they all come out. Congo comes out and, and Keno says, okay, yeah, y- you want to be in Congo? Fuck yeah. You, you beat the shit out of me in five in less than five minutes. You're in Congo. And then, but the person who's not super excited about this is Katsuhiko Nakajima. And let me tell you something. I want to see a match between Masakatsu Funaki oh, man. and Katsuhiko, Katsuhiko Nakajima so badly right now. It, that's, I, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask this question as an aside. Um, and I, I, I already know the answer, but I'm a big fan of Funaki's like highlighter yellow uh, tights that he's been wearing. I just think those are so cool. And I know he's just going to go to the red and that's such a bummer to me because <laughs> everybody wears red or black or, you know, whatever, but I, that, that color just pops out. And I just think it's so cool that an old dude like him in such great shape is able to wear that shit and like pull it off and look like a badass still. But I mean, he is a badass, so he can wear whatever he wants and, and <laughs> kill dudes in the ring for all, for all I know, but you know, yeah, this, this match was awesome. Um, I'd also like to point out the opener I caught, uh, for the recommendation of, uh, I, I believe Dylan Fox was going around, uh, pimping the, the opener of that, uh, January 22nd Osaka show where it was, uh, Neo and how, and, uh, like a 20 minute, uh, time limit draw. And that was a hate filled match as well, man. Did you, did you by chance catch that? I, I did not catch it. Like, yeah, it was Dylan from Eastern Laird who was pimping that over on over on the Twitter and I'm going to watch that because like if you're saying it's good and yeah. if Dylan's saying it's good like well okay well two people whose opinions I I fully trust yeah I'm going to go watch it maybe right after while you're watching uh the tag title know, match the <laughs> runaway suplex versus next stream I'm going to watch yep. Neo and how have a hey I I love hate filled matches it's it's great like so how you know, wait is it Neo no how how left the Congo yeah yeah how's the the kid, the guy who looks like he's 13 years old, right? Yeah. Officially. <laughs> like, so how, how left Congo to join up with, with, so he, he was tag team partners with Neo. So, and now Neo's like up shit Creek because he's got nothing in his career anymore because he, he he's just a tag team wrestler, but <laughs> that's good. Like, you know, like Neo should be there to get how over, like put this guy over and like get him to another different level. Cause you got to build around guys like, like how and you also got to give him a new fucking name okay like he's not in congo anymore give him a new fucking name please um give him back his real name there you go one idea there, there that 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 is like someone's using the real name in professional wrestling what a concept but um on a, before we go joy this that's going to be it so yeah you know uh, nakajima versus kitamiya go watch it masakatsu funaki versus keno and you can't say i don't have enough time for that much it's four, it's less than four fucking minutes. Go watch it. You've got the time yep. for it. And, and and per recommendation from Dylan and, and Joey, uh, Neo versus How from the the January because January twenty second show. It's the opener. I'm gonna go watch that probably right after this. But uh, coming up for Nakajima, the person who came out after he defeated Kitamiya was uh, one of my least favorite wrestlers in the world, uh, <laughs> Kazuyuki Fujita, who just looked at him and I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with this because yeah, because here's the thing: people maybe not realize about Nakajima. Nakajima has been like mentored, both in the ring and out of the ring, by his his adopted father, not legally, but you know, 
Tensuke yeah. Saki. And his adopted mother, Akira Okoto. And I am sure they have taught Katsuhika Nakajima every political trick there is to know in professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so do I worry that Fujita is going to pull some bullshit with Nakajima? Not really, because I, I believe that Nakajima is legit tough. Yeah. I, I believe I, Nakajima... I Sorry, go ahead. That Nakajima... If Fujita tries some bullshit with him, like where he fucking stiffed him, like really yeah. hard, Nakajima is going to fucking give him a fucking receipt. And he's going to like fuck him up. Here's the other thing. Politically, Nakajima is so important to Noah right now. Yep. Like there is no way wrong guy is going to try to fuck him in favor of like one of these guys that he's a complete mark for in Fujita, right? Because <laughs> any, anyone from IGF, he's a mark for. Knows how he's a fucking mark for. Kendo Kashin, fucking fucking Fujita and you know whoever else right like but they're, they're not going to pull any shit with with Nakajima because Nakajima is not going to take any shit from Fujita from fucking Mudo or anyone that's why you know this is my theory Joey that's why Marafuji was the transition champion from Mudo to Nakajima because Mudo was probably going to say I'll lose to I like Marafuji he's a good kid I'll put him over I'll lose the belt to him because Nakajima, he probably wanted to get a win over Nakajima, and Nakajima's probably like, no. Nah. Like, I don't know that for a fact. That's just my guess. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my head cannon, <laughs> as it were. And I'm, I'm sticking with that. But Nakajima probably said, yeah, Muda wants to wrestle you. Okay, I'm winning the title, right? No, he's going to beat you. No, no. I'm not losing <laughs> to him. He's 60. He's got no knees. I'm not fucking losing to him. Like, oh, but Kiyomiya and she's like, I'm not them. They want to lose. They're going to agree to lose him. That's that's their business. I'm fucking Katsuhika Nakajima. I ain't fucking losing to Keiji Muto at the age of 60. All right. No, <laughs> that's what I think happened. That's why Marafuji was a transition champion, because it should have been Nakajima beating Muto for that belt. You know, if yep. you're going to put the belt on Nakajima, he should have been the one to beat Muto. But probably Muto didn't want to lose to him. So he's like, OK, we'll put on Marafuji. Marafuji will we'll do the job Eat readily. Because he's a professional to, to Nakajima. <laughs> so but it's fine. We got, a, we got a way better match between, between Marafuji and Nakajima for that title match, you know? So for I'm sure. not complaining yeah. there. The, the, uh, the Nakajima uh, Fujita match that takes place on February 23rd, correct? I believe so. So that's the same day as uh, Miyahara and Abby. So which one will you be watching live, WH? <laughs> Listen, I might not even watch Miyahara and Kendo fucking on like the fucking VOD. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, unless I, but, unless Kento beats him in less than four minutes, probably I'm not going to watch that match. <laughs> well, I, I will say um, to your point about Nakajima, um, I'm, I have like no, uh, I'm a and I'm a fan of Fujita uh, for what it's worth, but I have no like reservation to the fact that I think that Nakajima could, could at this stage in his life beat the hell out of Fujita. If he really wanted to, <laughs> I think he's classically trained. He's had MMA fights as well. I think he could, I think he could take Fujita if he needed to. That's just my opinion, but I, I don't I, think. Yeah. I think he's got like, like he's got like a hidden reserve of like actual sheet fighting skills. Like, yeah. like if he wanted to fuck someone up for real, like, I mean, he kicks hard. Like, yeah regardless like in a in a in a worked fight you know like if if you piss him off like i don't think like he's he's i think very smart he's been wrestling for he's 33 right he's like 33 34 he's been wrestling since he's 15 yeah okay half his life has been in that ring i've been watching him uh like half of my life which is also half of his life (laughs) <laughs> like it's just so it's one of those things where like you, you like you see somebody that's like your contemporary and uh or like the same age as you or whatever and, and you're like wow they're a lot further along in life and and a lot more successful than i am at the same stage in life <laughs> but you know, that's that's how i've always like felt with nakajima just being on in the same age range as him but dude like yeah He's he's a freaking killer. I I can't wait for that match. Like I, I imagine it'll go similar to uh, uh, the Fujita Keno match that happened. I believe it was early last year, like last March. Um, except Nakajima comes out on top this time. Hopefully, <laughs> Nakajima is not losing to Fujita. Seriously, no. like I would think that like any any momentum and any goodwill that Rongai has been 
you know, doing with like the main event scene in, in yeah. Noah, like he would just be flushing it down the toilet if if Fujita beat Nakajima. Like, why would you put the belt on Fujita? Like, it makes zero sense. Like Nakajima, because you you have to you know build to whatever they're doing, which you would hope is Nakajima versus Kiyomiya, and like really kind of rehabilitating Kiyomiya to the point where like you want to see him beat Nakajima for that title and give Nakajima yeah. give him a long reign. Why not? Like he's, he, he, he would add so much stability to that title and add so much prestige. I think he's really one of the hottest things in wrestling in the world right now. Yeah, no, I agree for sure. So, yeah. And with that, that being said, we're going to wrap it up here, but, but Joey, thank you very much for joining me here on, on post Perez being, I know you're normally the, the John Pollock of deathmatch wrestling throughout the world. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but thank you for talking about just, you know, pretty much non-deathmatch wrestling with me for, for the last however long this show has been going on. Oh, it's been a pleasure, buddy. I, I, I love coming on and chatting all things wrestling and just chatting in general with you. So it's, it's all the pleasure is mine. And uh, anytime you, you need me to come on and, uh, and pinch hit for, for John or Karen or anybody, uh, just let me know. But <laughs> for sure, for sure. And, and, and uh, where can people find you? On, on, yeah, uh, if they want uh, for the DMs, for those, for those DMs for the big Japan, yeah. Uh, fo- feel free to follow me on Twitter at uh, Joey underscore Bay, or on Instagram if you if you like to you know see stupid Instagram stories and just personal life BS. But uh, I try to make my stories fun on there, so uh, it's I guess it's worth shilling. But it's uh, at Bowie <laughs> underscore J. So flip the first letters of my first name and last name there. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's all pretty pretty lighthearted on on my end of the world, <laughs> at least on social medias. L- listen, if if you like cats, then follow his <laughs> his Instagram. I usually he's he's got a, quite a few cats as as pets in his house, and and they're all cute. I I do like watching your Instagram stories when you when it's your cats. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they're so. uh, they're they're very fun. So I appreciate that. I'll let them know that they have fans. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe this year I will meet them. Who knows? I hope so. I, and, I hope uh, we can we can sync up and, and make that happen. Listen, here's the thing. Like me and Jay are talking off air. I, I, I'm hoping to go out to the United States, you know, you know, all things, you know, being better this coming year. Yeah. That that I can go out to to not only St. Louis, that but we're gonna do a road trip. Maybe we'll start off in Chicago. And if we can, <laughs> here's the thing. I get here, I gotta blow everyone's mind. Like I if I can meet up with Joey in the United States and we can work out the schedule, I will go to a fucking GCW show with Joey <laughs> Bay. Or maybe if maybe if it's over the summer, maybe we could even do even something even scummier like uh, King of the Death matches and go see Ian Rodden for, for a week. No, no, I am not fucking giving any <laughs> fucking money or giving fucking Ian Rodden any of my fucking time. Like. No. I'll pay. I'll pay for your ticket if that's no, no, no. That. You're not because I can get money. You can always get back. You can never recover time. <laughs> that's fair. Well, I, regardless, we'll we'll find a, a, a some time and hopefully some shows to, to to hit up. And I just want people to like see me on fucking GCW pay per view in the front row and be like, oh fuck, it's the Beach Park. At a Dude, I'm gonna GCW take. Show. I'll like. I'll like. Uh, like deck you out in like some GCW merch or something. No, <laughs> that will never happen. I bet no, that will never happen. But you know, if that happened, you know, like you know, Way and John and fucking John uh-huh. Cena are all gonna be like, oh, oh yeah, look who it is in front row of GCW show. That might happen. <laughs> I just say if I can work it out, because I, I I won't go to fucking GCW just for anyone, but I will go to, for, to fucking a GCW show for my good friend Joey Bay. Oh, that's so sweet. I appreciate it. Well, well, we got to see Ninja Mac together. He's uh, that's basically all my Twitter account is is a Ninja Mac Stan account. So. Oh well, Ninja <laughs> Mac is going to go to Noah, right? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Noah news, I guess uh, that's a, a good cap to the conversation. But yeah, hopefully he's able to go over there at some point. But dude. I mean, if you're not on the Ninja Mac train, like I get it. It's still it's still uh not fully in force yet, but 
dude, uh, you better hop on soon because it's uh, the train's leaving. <laughs> uh, he, he better not tie the shoelaces of any Yakuza in the front row at a Corgan Hall. So I'm going to say he, he might you might get him into a lot of trouble. He got me in Chicago a couple weeks ago and uh, I got him on tape and I, I posted on Twitter, but <laughs> I should have told him like, you can't, this doesn't fly in Japan, man. You can't uh. like, you, you might, <laughs> you might untie the wrong person's shoes over there. So uh, <laughs> generally speaking, if you're a foreigner, if you're listening to this, you're wrestling, you're a young wrestler, you're, you're, you're thinking about having aspirations going to Japan. When you get there, please enjoy. Uh, don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass the company yep. you're, you're, you're working for. Don't basically, I tell people, I would say to people, don't bram this, you know, this opportunity. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. Go look it up. It's, it's out there. <laughs> Anyways, for, for Joey Bay, my name is WH Park. Next month, hopefully, we'll be, it'll be uh, me and the returning John Pollock here on Post Perez. But uh, check out the, uh, the new episode of the Long and Whiny Row Row, which will be dropping uh, sometime, uh, as you're listening to this, probably sometime the week after. It'll be the, the uh, June Akiyama biography episode, Joey. We haven't, I haven't recorded that. As of, this, as of right now, it has not been recorded yet. But that's the plan. We, we're going to do the, the uh, June Akiyama the fifth, the fifth pillar, the unofficial fifth pillar is going to be, is going to be given the biography treatment on the next long and whiny road road. And that's tentatively done with one of the biggest Gene Akiyama fans that I know. And that's Jojo Remy. I can't wait to listen. You guys will do June Akiyama, all the justice that he deserves. We're so going to talk I, about I, his blue tights. Yes. We're going to talk about fucking probably Yuji Nagata as well. Okay. I feel I feel you can't talk about Gene Akiyama without talking about a little bit about Gene Akiyama, uh, Yuji Nagata as well. We talk about exploder suplexes, getting dropped on people's heads, all that good stuff. We're gonna talk about with Akiyama. I can't wait. <laughs> so, anyways, Joey, once again, thank you. Thanks for everyone who uh, who supports this show by tweeting about it, by liking the the announcements, by buying the Post Perez T shirt and the long and whiny row road t-shirt uh which you can find over at star store.postwrestling.com you know i keep telling john Cena, hey john next time you're going to meet your buddy eddie kingston give him a fucking four pillars t-shirt if he wears that thing like seriously my roll tees are gonna go fucking straight through the roof you know so oh, like, huh partner your 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 royalties will go through the roof partner <laughs> let me tell you something like if anyone's gonna wear that fucking shirt it'd be eddie kingston yeah, I, I totally agree, man. He's, if someone he's gave the, him that T-shirt and said, Eddie, you should wear this T-shirt, he'd be like, what are you, what are you talking about, partner? And then he'd look at it like, what? Fuck, he'd take off whatever he's wearing right then and there and put that on. I I could see that happening, man. Because <laughs> I know he's a big fan of the, the you know, the 90s all Japan like I am. But there you oh, go. Yeah. So, like, if you're listening and you're going to go to a show, indie show, and that and Eddie fucking Kingston's going to be there, give him that fucking T-shirt and get him to wear it. <laughs> Take a picture of it and put it on Instagram. Thank you. Anyways, for uh, for everyone else, anyways, with that being said, Joey, thank you. We'll talk to you again soon in the future. And uh, yeah, and uh, see you on the Long and Winding Royal Road. See you next month on Post Press. Until then, goodbye and good night.